Señor Dios nuestro, protector y guía de tu iglesia, infunde en tus servidores el espíritu de inteligencia, de verdad y de paz, para que conozcan lo que te agrada y tengan el valor de realizarlo. Porque... Now, I don't know if he's speaking Italian. I think he's speaking Italian, not Latin. And I can follow a little bit of it because I know a little Spanish. But if I'm not mistaken, all you Roman Catholics that might listen in on this, consider his words and what he's about to do. Vamos a organizar la peregrinación. Pediremos que podamos tomar la canoa. Does anyone know what in the world that thing is? In la I suspect it's some sort of symbol of authority. Oh, this is good. Watch this. Una alegría de los nuevos caminos para la iglesia y para una ecología integral. Vamos a pedir primero a los padres sinodales que Okay, if this man was just a half senile old guy that really didn't know what he was doing, I don't think the symbolism of this would be lost on people. I mean, if he, if he was really not knowing what he's doing, then yeah. Uh, let me ask a question. Perhaps somebody out there in the audience knows. It, who is the one who crowns? Is it, does the one receiving the crown, is he the greater or lesser authority? Isn't the, doesn't the crown, isn't the crown given by the greater authority and placed on the lesser authority? Hmm, 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 hmm. Uh, did anybody catch that? <clears throat> now, if he didn't know what he was doing, of course, you know, you, you don't know what to expect, and okay, and they're just not being nice, but, um, you know, the greater crowns the lesser. Comencemos a caminar en procesión hacia la puerta principal de la Basílica de San Pedro. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, that's like why Carl, uh, um, Charlemagne crowned himself rather than allowing the Pope to crown him. Isn't that true? Anybody remember that? Anybody read any history out there? If I recall, I believe it was Charlemagne that took the crown and put it on his own head. And I believe Napoleon did the same thing. Um, <clears throat> Because receiving the crown from the Pope meant you, the Pope had authority over you. Okay, look at, look at this. Look at this. This is the Pachamama idol. This is Mother Earth. This is representing Mother Earth. The red object there, her womb, that represents all of creation or especially the earth this is a primordial goddess the mother of all things uh common in all pagan religions wicca um uh, you know everything that's it you know you can always find the mother goddess the mother earth or whatever it is in just about everything pagan it's not in the scriptures not in christianity or biblical judaism which is like Old Testament Judaism. 
not modern Judaism. What they've got in uh, some of that today, I don't know. I'm not sure I want to look. Okay, so this is a pagan idol. Did you know where this was taking place? Did you notice that? Where is this located? Where is the the Pope in front of? He's in front of the is in the high altar in St. Peter's. Is, is that what it is? With the Ber, uh, Bernini's columns and behind that, isn't that where uh, St. Peter's uh, chair is up there? Somewhere back behind there. I mean, I've never been there, so I don't have, I've only seen it, seen it in photographs. So I really don't have a good spatial sense, but I suspect, well, I know that's where the Pope is. They're in front of the high altar. If that's the right terminology. This is a pagan idol. Anyone that doesn't realize this doesn't know anything about paganism or Wicca or New Age movement or ancient religions or anything. This is the most primitive of goddesses. Again, uh, the personification of the earth from which all life and being and everything else flows. A female, female deity to replace Jesus Christ, because he is the creator of all things. All things were made uh, through him and for him and to him are all things, and he's the one that sustains all things by the word of his power. There's the Pope right with the idol. Isn't that special? Vamos deixar os padres sinodais caminhar primeiro e depois os membros da casa. Now I assume he knows what he's doing. <laughs> now I am not a Roman Catholic, in case somebody hasn't noticed. Uh, I don't bow down to any images. I don't believe that in the new covenant there are sacred spaces. Okay, that to me, this is just a big building, an old big building. That's a little bit on, the, well, no, it's way on the gaudy side. Um, God does not dwell in buildings made by human hands. He dwells in his people. And in the New Testament, Jesus told the woman at the well that, that the time will come and now is when you'll neither worship here in Samaria or in Jerusalem. But uh, God's people will worship him in spirit and in truth because he dwells. We are, we are being built up into a living temple. We are living stones building, building up into a temple that is the dwelling place of God. Which I believe is what Peter said. And probably Paul. Um, now, as a non-Catholic or even Protestant, if you want to call me that. I would not consider desecrating St. Peter's, by even though I don't believe it's holy in and of itself, by bringing such a thing in there. I wouldn't do it as a Protestant who is opposed to the Pope and, the, and the, everything that's been added after the first century. I just oppose that. It's not biblical. But yet I would not do an act of desecration like this that the Pope is directly responsible for. Not only do you have multitudes of homosexuals running around this place, which is an abomination in the sight of God, you also have idol open pagan idolatry, which is an abomination. One of the there's only a few things that God calls an abomination. One is homosexual acts, and another is idolatry. Those aren't the only two things. There's maybe half a dozen things. But, I mean, e either Pope Francis is a, a senile old guy that doesn't know what he's doing and just being sweet, or he knows exactly what he's doing. Or he's just demon-possessed. Take your pick. I can't think of 
any other way around it. Um, this is a pagan idol in St. Peter's, in front of the high altar, in the presence of Pope Francis and the cardinals and the bishops. And they are participating in this. And he's allowed a pagan, I don't know if she's a shaman or what, but to crown him. In other words, submitting to her, recognizing her authority over him by taking that. At least that would be the normal symbology of that. Huh. cantando con... La guía de nuestro coro. Vamos a comenzar a cantar. Pedimos por favor que los padres sinodales vayan adelante. Luego los miembros de la asamblea del sínodo. Y luego los miembros de la So I take it this is the procession out of St. Peter's, given what I can understand. Are they speaking Spanish or Italian? Sometimes it's hard to tell. They're going to start singing, I know that. Waco, waco. Okay, I don't know what that means. Waka wata wako asato Santo That's not Spanish. It's not Portuguese. So you have the cross leading a procession that has a pagan idol in it and the pope well isn't that special <laughs> vincente what are these monitor uh, martyrs for um, liberation theology like sheep to the slaughter Okay, I see nets. Well, it looks like a rather small crowd. <laughs> And there's a cardinal right next to it and a bishop. Is he helping hold it or is he just, no, he's just walking right next to the, to the pagan idol of the Mother Earth. The, the sons of heaven are leaving, Senor, are going. Something like that. Yeah, they're fleeing right now. This is a procession into the abyss. Darkness has descended. Uh, it's been there for a long time, but it's just gone deep darkness now. Senor. 
Any Catholic apologists out there, would you like to to uh, put a good spin on this? I think that'd be interesting. Explain how that isn't an idol and how the Pope's not participating in in idolatry. In, in St. Peter's before the high altar. No, it's not Cielos, it's something else, I think. The sons of something. The, the fruit and the flowers. Well, there's some flowered children and some fruits in this procession, I think. SOS Amazon. <sighs> okay. Hijos de la selva, te alabamos, Señor. Las hijas de la selva, te alabamos, Señor. Los niños y sus madres, los hombres y sus brazos, las luchas y sudores, te alaban, Señor. The children and their mothers and sombres. I'm not sure what that is. The other song like Gatos. <laughs> Obviously, I'm not getting this well here. <laughs> Some static on the line. As the Pope waddles down. Los hijos de la selva te alabamos, Señor. Las hijas de la selva te alabamos, Señor. Los hijos de la selva te alabamos, Señor. Las hijas de la selva te alabamos, Señor. Why does he look like he's in handcuffs? Okay, this is the view from the front of St. Peter's. Okay. Big building. The fruits and the flowers, the mountains and the hidden places, something like that. A mighty fortress is our God. We need a good old Lutheran hymn right now. Now you all know why the Reformation happened. <sighs> Integral ecology, that means ecology woven into everything. Well, what is supposed to be woven into everything? Christ. So ecology will take the place of Christ. See, a true Christian wants the faith delivered once for all into the saints, fully integrated into his life. Now, we need ecology there another religion 
Worship and serve the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Exactly what that is. Creation, create creature. They're more repetitive than charismatics. Ah, something about freeing the poor, I believe. I didn't hear anything about the ricos, just the pobres. Uh, but the scripture says you're not to 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 prefer one over the other. There is no preference for the poor. That is sinful in the eyes of God. Justice and only justice shall you seek. You shall not give preference to the poor over the rich or vice versa. Uh, yeah, I guess those are social justice martyrs. Selva. Oh, maybe it's the, the is it the, the the children or the boys of the forest? The Selvos? Selvos? I'm not sh quite sure what language this is. Sounds a lot like Spanish, but... Portuguese and Italian sounds a lot like Spanish. Oh. And when you're not an expert at Spanish, then. Selvas. Silvas. Silvas, I believe, is forest. So it could be related to that. The children of the forest? Uh, yeah, I guess that would make sense in this context. Somebody lost a hand. <laughs> Sounds like Spanish. Is that where the idol is? Oh, yeah, there's, there's the canoe with the idol in. Following up behind the Pope, then the nets. Rainbow net. A rainbow colored net. If I was suspicious, <laughs> I could draw all kinds of invalid conclusions from this, or maybe valid. Okay, something about ad ad advancing into deeper waters. I'd say they're already way over their heads in deep water with the Lord God Almighty. Although I'm not sure you could get much more defiled than... Are these ordinary Catholic songs? I don't know. Aguas mas, uh, deeper waters, Advance, advancing toward deeper waters, I guess. Yeah, they're advancing toward deeper waters, like into the midst of the sea that hasn't been opened by Moses. You're all going to drown in those deeper waters. Y 
Not sure it's Spanish. But I do know what they're saying, basically. If it's from the Amazon, they're probably speaking Portuguese, which is very similar to Spanish. It's not Latin. Not good singing. Why do they look like a crowd milling around at a flea market? I think that's enough of this. Oh, there's the there's the idol right there. Um, this is uh, Vatican News. This is their official news production here. And uh, I, I think I've downloaded a copy of this just so it doesn't permanently disappear. Okay, uh, that's enough of that. <laughs> or my, way too much. Um, now, now I've got some stock footage. Next time a Catholic apologist tells me why I ought to become a Roman Catholic, I think I will just send him a portion of this video. I would like to hear some of them apologists. In fact, I may be go on some of their websites and ask for explanations of this. So what was the Pope doing with an idol, a pagan idol, in front of the high altar at St. Peter's? Isn't that a good question? I think a lot of Catholics have that same question. And I'm not your enemy. But, I mean, why, why should anyone become a Roman Catholic when this is going on? Uh, you got to guys get biblical, and hey, I might think about it. <laughs> got to get biblical, though. What we really need is to go back to the scriptures, back to what all Christians hold to, truly Catholic, not something that's been twisted and overlaid with all the the accumulation uh, of the dust of ages. Needs to be all blown off. Huh. And I think that's why Why does God allow this? He's obviously sovereign. He can do whatever he wants. He can get rid of the Pope like that. Just pull his plug and Pope's down. Pope's out. Pope's in hell. Um, actually, a tradition, there's, I have a lot in common with traditional Roman Catholicism. I mean, you go back to... I mean, the, 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 the classic theism of Thomas Aquinas, I'd probably agree with almost all of that. Uh, I, I was even reading Vatican I a little bit earlier, and, and a lot of the parts of that I could go down. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, talking about modernism and all those things. Yep, yep, yep. I agree, I agree, I agree. When it comes to the authority of the Pope, nope, 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 nope. Because <laughs> it's not biblical. Um, I suspect that like most people, most Roman Catholics are rather indifferent. Uh, most Baptists are rather indifferent. Most Methodists are rather indifferent. Most Christians in general are rather indifferent. It's just part of their life that occurs on Sunday morning, and that's it. It's a tradition. And they like some of the ideas, and they have a, a sort of faith. But it's not a faith that dominates their life. Uh, it's not a consuming faith, where Christ is the center of all things. Uh, where you'd be willing to take up your cross and follow him to Calvary. If he said, take up your cross and follow me up that hill. Literally. Uh, but the time is coming and is at hand where we may be required to do that. We've just seen, you know, 
if it wasn't for a few factors missing, I would say this could be the the abomination of desolation. Um, spoken of by Daniel the prophet. But I think there might be a few factors missing. Although Jesus says in there, let the reader understand, which means it's probably not what most people will think it is. You have, I know in Daniel it talks about the one coming on the wings of an abom of abomination. Now, the, the, the term wing could be translated as the extremity or the extreme, the extremes of abomination. You know, the wing tips, the most stretched out, the farthest, the most extreme abominations. And what, what do we have here? We have uh, Roman Catholics saying that the, the Vatican is controlled by a, a homosexual mafia. And they run the place and Pope Francis is their man. And they've just taken a pagan idol before the high altar in St. Peter's Basilica with the Pope there in procession and just let it out the front door. Um, well, let me say this. The Lord God Almighty, the Lord Jesus Christ, is not happy with this. And he is going to make that evident. But sometimes he gives people time, gives them enough rope to hang themselves, as it said. People, when, what does it say in the song, in Proverbs, or, or maybe it's a song, when justice is delayed, the hearts of the wicked are set fully on doing evil. Something like that, I'm paraphrasing. But that's, that's a gist of, of what it says in there. Where it, because uh, God's justice doesn't come immediately, people think, I guess God doesn't care or God doesn't exist, so I can do whatever I want. And they are set fully on their evil because there's no fear of God in them. Well, this is not going to turn out well, people. <laughs> Huh. Okay, this isn't new. This was the 7th. This is now the 22nd. The, this thing ends, this monstrosity ends on the 27th, which is a Sunday. I Yeah, it is a Sunday. It, the Sunday, the 27th. On the Lord's Day is the last day of this abomination. This two-week-long abomination? Or the three-week-long abomination? I don't know. It's way too long. Um, let's see. Three weeks. Three week long. Oh, one, two, th three week long abomination. This is an abomination that will bring desolation if it's not already desolate in there. Um, you can't do things like this. Even though in the New Testament there really aren't sacred sites, God looks at the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And I don't think there's a whole lot of God's light in the thoughts and intentions that are going on at St. Peter's today. Something else. It's become a place of darkness and idolatry. Open, open idolatry. I... I I can't, I'm not aware. Now, there's been abominable popes. There's been a popes that basically turned the Vatican into, or what was before the Vatican, into a brothel. They just, you know, got in there, used what power they had, made hay while the weather was good, and then died or something. <laughs> And you had, you know, certain families that were the, the, the Borgias and others. But I can't recall a public act of idolatry. There's been reports of Satanism practiced in there and that, but this, that was private. This is public. This is a public act of idolatry 
before the entire world, broadcast by Vatican News. As if it's just fine. Well, it's not. Would someone ex please explain to me why this is okay? Because in my foolish, empty-headed Protestant preacher mind, I look at this and say, yikes. This is really bad. This is really bad. Even for Rome, this is really, really, really bad. 